Welcome back to the News at 10. After seven years of legal battle, the Supreme Court has overturned the ban on Music Royalty Collecting Body, Musical Copyright Society of Nigeria. The body was banned from operating by the Nigerian Copyrights Commission amidst claims that it was operating illegally in the country. This judgment led to the signing of a memorandum of understanding between MCSN and the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria. In this next report, our correspondent Oreolu Ashunibari traces the musical journey of the MCSN. Every time a song is played on radio or music video on television, it is a form of recognition for the creative mind behind the music. But that is just half of it. The other part, which many will consider more rewarding than verbal accolades, is the payoff that comes with the work, also known as royalty. But when this payment does not happen, it stifles any drive that artist has to pursue the dream of making music. This paved the way for the royalty collecting body, Musical Copyright Society of Nigeria, or MCSN, to come into the picture by protecting the financial interests of owners of works. This went on for a while until the Nigerian Copyright Commission pulled the plug on the body, following allegations from another collecting body which claimed that MCSN was operating illegally in the country. The men at the helm of affairs at MCSN recalled the days before the allegations brought with it problems. Some people came using the force of government to, 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 to take away what we have labored hard to collect, to get from individuals, from organizations, both national and international. Then somebody used the force of government to disown us of those properties. And meanwhile, prior to that time, there are pending cases, both at the Federal High Court, the Court of Appeal, and the Supreme Court. The copyright, you know, is very clear on Section 39 that they were hampering on, that he said you must uh, maintain a monopoly. The copyright uh, didn't say so. 39 actually said you may not approve another for a for the same particular class of work if the existing one satisfy everybody. So you can see it's a discretionary, you know. So it's not it's not a rigid. So people choose to misinterpret it to suit their own hidden agenda by telling you it's only one. So that was a, a lie. And so, decades of court battles and arrests later, the Supreme Court has overturned the tag of illegality placed on MCSN. A move which has now opened the door to rekindle partnerships, most notably with the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, BON. The signing of this memorandum of understanding between both parties is a testament to this. So what does all this mean? Kenny Ogunbe, speaking on behalf of Bonn, educates on the future of music in Nigeria. Anything that is done where any business that worth billions, I say that with all deep sense of respect, billions of Naira should, not, should never, never, never be monopolized. Only in Nigeria. Other countries is never. How do artists whose creativity is up for grabs see the development? They should just be diplomatic about it so they don't create several other cartels that will be uh, fighting them to, to make sure that we don't get what we're supposed to get because when these groups start popping up like this differently, everyone wants to show that they are the real ones that are doing the main job, the ones that have the license to do the job, so it becomes a problem. So, every time a song is played on radio or music video on television, understand that there's a lot more that goes on in the background. Hopefully, the collecting bodies will sheath their swords and embrace dialogue. After all, the stage is big enough for everyone. Aurelu Ashonibare, Channels Television News. The Anambra State Governor, Willy Obiano, has given assurances that the National Youth Service Corps permanent site in the state will be completed within the next three months. The Governor made this known while receiving some members of the National Governing Board of the NYSC at the Governor's Lodge in Amorbia. The new complex project is believed to be in its final stages.
Members of the governing board of the National Youth Service Corps paid a courtesy visit to the governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano. They made requests concerning the status of the NYC camp in the state, as well as opportunities in agriculture for corps members. Another appeal, Your Excellency, is the youth coppers want to go into agriculture. And I know that Anambra is one state that is very good in agriculture. So we want to appeal to you if, there is, if it will be possible that you give the youth core scheme of Anambra state a parcel of land and some agricultural implements so that the NYC Entrepreneurship Development Initiative in agriculture can take off. The governor explains the reason for his fondness of the NYC scheme. He also promises the delivery of the permanent NYC complex in good time. I may have emotional attachment to NYC because I was the best copper in 1979. I served in Premier State, you know, and uh, I had a merit award as the best copper and uh, more than that privilege. So I tried to extend it here. So I don't joke with NYC. The plaza that I'm building is a massive structure. I would have finished it right now, but I think because when I came, it was a project started by my uh, predecessor. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, they were all bungalows and all this stuff. Uh, I don't like those kinds of structures, so I had to redesign them and uh, make them uh, very standard. You know, So if you have time, you visit the place, you see that uh, uh, what is left uh, won't take us three months to, to, to finish. On the parcel of life for agriculture, that is at the heart of the program that we are doing, and that is done. We will do more. We will uh, we'll give them practical experience in commercial farms here. The vice chancellor of the Inam Diazikwe University was also in the room and talks about the global success story of a student of the university. A Nigerian, African, from Anambra State has been given the honor now as the fourth best proficient person in Chinese language worldwide. The Chinese ambassador said that they want to receive the young man. He just came back from Beijing. 118 countries participated. And out of that competition, he came forth in the whole global effect. The visit ends on a pleasant note. Hopefully, the matters discussed at this meeting will be presented soon. And now to some company reports. MTN Nigeria has launched its latest package, MTN M Pulse, for ages 9 to 15, promising to give 1.2 megabyte, gigabytes, that is, for 150 naira. At a summer event organized by the company in Lagos, the chief marketing and strategy officer said the plan is designed to enable tweens and teens to learn useful skills while having fun. The Impulse package comes with a voice plan and a website which hosts a variety of courses and study aids. Leveraging on technology to provide content which is both educational and fun is what describes the new proposition from MTN. And the target group is children in Nigeria between the ages of 9 and 15. Make sure that the children of today are the future leaders of tomorrow and we start it today. Then we need to do something for them. And that's where the impulse proposition came in. It's not only a proposition, but it's a complete ecosystem. So we partnered with the best of the world. We said, okay, let's bring content, let's bring uh, a lot of information which is very, very rich. And what exactly are the benefits? They enjoy the dual benefits, for, firstly from the voice plan that gives um, data bonuses, it gives a WhatsApp bonus, it gives birthday um, bonuses, birthday rewards as well. And then children on the um, that go to the websites get to enjoy so much content, um, up, content approved from the Ministry of Education. For the regulator, it's a thumbs up as children prepare for the future. ICT facilities at this age will really help them to develop more confidence, help them to be able to compete globally, and also help them to assist them go forward in their education. And to drive on the message, the Empress Planet comes alive with a large number of children enjoying themselves at numerous facilities provided and others exhibiting their skills. I came here to come and, um, come and draw a portrait of Shidima. 
latching onto the platform is this easy. And the only thing which a parent has to do is buy a SIM uh, and just dial star 344 uh, and hash and that's it. And he's online. And he can also go to mtnonline.com uh, forward slash impulse and still do the same. With the launch of MTN Impulse, the telecommunication company says it's giving parents and guardians more ways to equip the next generation. Well, let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Anne Waldo. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Ijoma. We'll begin with the Central Bank of Nigeria unveiling guidelines for the issuance of corporate bonds to help support long-term credit facility to the agriculture and manufacturing sectors. The spokesman for the CBN, Mr. Isaac Okorafo, says deposit money banks interested in providing credit financing projects in the two key sectors can now request for a release of funds from their cash reserves requirement to finance the project under the differentiated cash reserves requirement regime. He also says the maximum facility will be 10 billion naira per project at an interest rate of 9% per annum. The ongoing trade war between the United States and China will worsen in 2018 and the impact on the global economy will be felt the most in 2019. That's according to a new report released by Moody's Investor Services today. That report says that while advanced economies will grow 2.0% next year, emerging markets remain highly vulnerable to the risk of capital outflows. Moody's Vice President Madhavi Bokil says the tightening of financial conditions through asset price and currency adjustments are now more likely than a few months ago and this will derail the global economy. Moody's new report warns that escalating trade tension will also add to the overall uncertainty and risk for economies will weaken fundamentals and relatively shallow but open capital markets. Nigeria's oil export is expected to rise in a four-month high, and that will happen in October on returning supply of several larger grades. The export plan comprises 57 cargoes, but exports of three major local grades, we're talking about the Bonnie Light, the Kwa Ibo, and four cargoes, are all expected to drop by 14% in October to around 540,000 barrels per day, down from 630,000 barrels for September delivery. The October's loading program will be the largest since June this year, but it's still smaller than the 1.7 million barrels per day which was recorded last year. Let's see how Nigeria's stock market fared at the close of trading today. It made a significant recovery as investors are taking advantage of the recent drop in the value of listed bellwether stocks. Let's join Tosin Adeshina for more. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The domestic stock market resumed today after a two-day break for the Muslim holiday, and in Thursday trading upbeat by 1.57% and back into the 35,000 level. Traders attribute the market's sharp rebound to bargain hunting in the shares of Dangote Cement, which drove up the industrial goods sector by nearly 2%, while the insurance and oil and gas sectors added some support. The price chart ended with a negative margin as profit taking hit 25 equities, particularly the shares of livestock feeds, Red Star Express and Jai's Bank, while WAPIC Insurance topped a list of 11 gainers. Total volume of shares traded for the day stands at 216.98 million units in 3,226 transactions, largely driven by the shares of UBA, Zenith Bank and FBN Holdings. That's the Stock Market Report. I'm Tosin Additional. Thank you, Tosin. Escalating trade tensions between the U.S. and China is still affecting major world markets. So we'll see the numbers for today. For those numbers, we end business news for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. It's back to you, Juma. You first. First bank.
Thanks a lot, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10, Super Eagles captain Mikel Obi pulls out of next month's 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier against Seychelles owing to injury and club commitments. That's on Sports News. Please stay with us.